our natural state of who we are as God created us is sacred. <coughs> but to me, nothing of the earth is sacred. Or I could say the flip side is, in the state of mind, everything of the earth is sacred, you know, because it's all inclusive, so you can say it either way, but it's like the state, no thing, no individual thing, you know, no person, place, thing, object. I'm not really into uh, spiritualizing matter and, and turning some, oh, holy water, I've got holy water here, you know, like they have in the Catholic Church, and, you know, and, and all stuff. You know, I really, I'm not in it. I mean, I go to, they have me speak in all kinds of centers. I was out in Los Angeles at the Sai Baba Center, and they've got big pictures of Sai Baba and flowers. You can't even sit in the chairs because the flowers are there, the, the fruit, and they, I mean, it's like, what's, what's the fruit for? You know, it's like, well, it's an offering for, for the Master, you know, and I, I don't think he's really interested in the fruit. Uh, you know, it's, it's a state of mind that's not personal. So we don't need to have these personal kind of gurus and, and look up to people as if there's some that have got it and some that don't. Because that's not really what the state is. You know, it's a state of, of perfect equality where we're all in it <coughs> together. And that's the feeling I have is that, you know, of course in that state that no, no one's ahead, no one's behind. There aren't beginners and intermediate and advanced. It's all the same thing. So, to me, that's, that's what the state is. It's a state of perfect union, perfect connectedness, and it, it doesn't have these little degrees and, and gradations. And that's also why there's perfect invulnerability, because if everything is connected and everything is one, then, then what would attack even mean? You have to have two to have an attack. You have to have an attacker and an attackee. But if everything is one, then it just means that invulnerability is is natural, because there is no attack. So that's what uh, the talk is tonight. I want to just pause for a moment and see that this is all resonating, or if there's things that are like, ooh, ooh, this is a heebie -jeebie. But <laughs> this is different than what I <laughs> thought I was going to hear. If there's any questions or um, comments or things like that, and we'll, we can use those in the talk. Yeah, that, it's like as you go on the spiritual path, you know, that's where you, you really, really start to get down, you know, deeper and deeper and deeper, because it's like the ego will try to find anything to be insulted about, or to feel like it's, it's being um, mistreated, you know, in some way, you know, I mean, all, all sense of victimization is based on the belief that you can be unfairly treated and and certainly being disrespected. You know, once you kind of get past a lot of other things, then it's like the ego is kind of like that spider sitting back and, and just a, a, a look or a, a glance or a facial expression can be like, how dare you? Uh, or maybe you're, you're expecting a comment uh, or you're expecting something compliment or something like this and it's not there. So it's like the absence of it, again, it's like, it seems like an insult or a sense of being disrespected. It's like, um, I was just down in Argentina last November and uh, these two women um, had been classmates when they were 17 years old and they are now in their 50s and they re-met at one of my gatherings. They found each other again at one of my gatherings and so they connected and they became really close friends and they 
call each other, they have breakfast together now, and they chat and have tea. And they were my translators when I went down there. So they, one was on my one side, she was like translating everything that I was saying to the audience, and the other one was on the other side, and everything that was spoken in Spanish, she was whispering in my ear, you know, giving me the, the Spanish to English translation. So we, go to, we did about 15, 20 different gatherings, and it was this miracle, everything was flowing, flowing. And then at one of the gatherings, uh, the one Patricia, the one who was translating over here for me, she saw some people that came in to the gathering, and she recognized them, and she, she knew, who, knew who they were, and she just, just was like looking, and, and it was just kind of, she said, later she told me, she was insulted that they would walk in uh, late to the gathering, you know, that they were extremely disruptive, and she said the one, she said, I, I knew him, I knew he's kind of, He's not sincere, he's not devoted and everything, so I purposely didn't even send him an email uh, because I didn't even want him there. And, I, and my other friend, my best friend, she must have invited him and brought him in and they walked in late and she just, she continued translating, she just was, just, and then, then he asked a question of me and, and I answered and he, he kind of kept at it and kept at it. And she told me later, she said, oh, he was toying with you, he was trying to trap you, he was trying to set you up. She was just seething, just trying to continue on with the translation, just seething that this man would be trying to trap me and, and trap me and trap me. And, and then he, they got up when the gathering was still going on and they left early. She, oh, she could hardly stay in her chair, you know, that they were, that, that they, how they even got here without the email and then to come in late and then to do the trapping question and then to leave early. She was just really insulted, and so all the way home she was just like, oh, I was so angry, David, I couldn't believe it. And she said, didn't you see any of that? Don't you intuit that? Didn't you intuit any of that? And I said, no, no, I thought he was a sweetie, you know, it's just, uh, I mean, you, you're in that state where you, all you want to do is give, and you're not looking for anything, you know, you know. I, I was in a cafe today um, talking about this with the, the waitress uh, who was getting preparing the food, and and there was a woman reading a book off to the side, and then uh, before we left, she came up and she said, "I want to come to the, the gathering, and I'm gonna, I'll be there late, and so on and so forth." And and so took down a name, and we called her and told her where it was going to be and everything. But but it's like you know the best part of it is that you don't have to plan it or figure it out. You you just show up. Uh, I always just show up. I mean seems like physically I always show up. If they put my name on something and say that I'm going to be there, I show up. And then emotionally, or, or with my heart, I show up. And that's it. I mean, that's, the, 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 that's as far as I go with it. I mean, I don't pick the words to say. I don't have to uh, figure anything out, uh, figure the questions out, or figure anything out. I go there to give. And there's a line in The Course in Miracles where Jesus says that in, in any situation where you perceive that something is lacking, it is always what you have failed to give. Uh, that's what is lacking in any situation, what you have failed to give. Well, that's, when you look at that, that's the way out of feeling disrespected, is to, to show up with just a willingness to give. And you have this wellspring of love inside of you that just wants to come pouring through. So it's not like you have a shortage. Uh, it's like you, it's like having the ocean in you, in your heart, and wanting to just pour out the ocean. And so I think for me that's where it went from a spiritual practice into a state of mind. 